So we got the frame looking pretty cool and the engine and the bike runs. I think the next thing I'll do will be to remove all these fuel lines, all this extra stuff. Maybe sit the, uh, the side fairings on here and see if that clears it properly. I can't remember. Definitely this plenum chamber fouls on the bottom of the uh, fuel tank here. So that's definitely something that needs to be modified. It's different underneath compared to the standard one. So yeah, I'll just start to pull some stuff off and try and make a plan of attack as I go, I suppose. So I've taken all the fuel lines off. I'll remove the pump and then I'll remove this extra jumper cable and try my new tank out. I'll give this pump back to my dad. I'll buy a replacement one of these because it just fits in my bike way easier. This is probably overkill. So after bike car blasting it, you keep finding this stuff everywhere. So I better get rid of that. So the tank's sitting on. You can see it's pretty much down hard at the back. About two kilometers away at the front. So I'll have to dig deeper and see what's going on. So I bought this tank second hand when I got all my new fairings. Um, I can see it's been on someone's bike, which is good. That means it should basically fit. I'm just having a look at this bit. All the paint is quite thick back here. Like, um, yeah, it's actually got like quite large air bubbles underneath. So I might break away the, the really loose stuff because um, it's only gonna give me more clearance and I can really see what I'm playing with. I don't want it to damage the paint on the outside, but. So the fuel lines are off. I broke off all the real crumbly bits and pieces so that I can, yeah, gain a little bit of area if I'd need to. But um, yeah, the paint mustn't have stuck well to the aluminium just here. It had like a really large air bubble. So I think I'd see the first issue. It's that it's actually hitting this main feed pipe which isn't on a normal bike so I'm going to compare it to the other tank and see what the difference is. So the first difference I can see is between these two holes this does actually have a bit of a scallop out where the new tank it's actually still flat until a lot further back. So I'll remove that feed pipe and see if it sits down any better then. So looking a bit further into it this pipe where it goes to the bottom of this plenum chamber isn't a simple job to get out so it looks like it's throttle bodies and plenum chamber out time so it's been a while since i've had the throttle bodies and plenum chamber out bit of a job but got to start somewhere let's start with the throttle cable okay throttle cables off next thing is the throttle position sensor god knows why i haven't put a plug on it but looks like i need to unbolt it so from memory, this throttle position sensor isn't the same as what they run standard. I think they had quite a large unit that used to hang off the side of the throttle bodies. So all the clamps are backed off and the intake manifold clamps are backed off and it's actually quite, quite loose. Like I thought it'd be a lot harder than that. It just shows how good this silicon stuff is compared to the um, stock rubber hoses. Even these were so much easier to get off than what the fuel lines are. These are still quite soft like the day that I put them on. Beauty. All right, awesome, there you go. So what's down here? Sweet. This feed pipe needs to unbolt, which can be done. But before I do that, I'm going to try the tank on and just see if the problem's back here further. That is sitting down perfectly at the back. Also at the front, which means our problem isn't in the pipe coming from the turbo, it's either this part here or this part here. And I've always thought that it was actually this part, but the time's come to now unbolt this and bolt it back up and see if the issue is in this small piece of pipe here.